journal by the end of part five is considered to be one of the strongest characters in the series, let alone the strongest Joe Star by the fandom for years, ever since the end of part five happened. But over the last few years, whether that's on TikTok or even some JoJo related channels here on YouTube that dabble into power scaling, people have seemingly been overhyping Jerno scaling with Golden Experience Requiem, scaling him far above what he actually does realistically. So, in this video, I will be talking and most likely debunking most misconceptions about Jerno GR that I am personally aware of, and this video would just likely be a rather long one, but hey, what it needs to be done. Now, there are a lot of ways people have a tendency of actually trying to scale journal very, very high. And a lot of these are just misconceptions. The first lot of misconceptions when it comes to journal scaling comes from the stance that's presented to us within series. If you actually look at GER's stand stats, we see all of the stand stats are ranked as none, quote unquote. A lot of people have a tendency to see these stand stats specifically for Gold Experience Requiem and scale these stats to the physical capabilities of Gold Experience Requiem without any further context or looking at the series as a whole. People look at the, this and think the reason why all the statistics of GER's page from what we're given, even the speed one are none, is because they're just so high it's impossible to describe <laughs> with the existing stand measuring system. This seems this is, includes even Poochie's Made in Heaven, which is unaffected by its own time acceleration, unlike literally anything else. Even Jotaro's time stop and accelerates his own speed to basically reach those infinite quote-unquote tiers. And as the stat says on, you know, its own stand stats from the manga, it supposedly has a speed ranking of an infinite value. But this line of scaling is very, very dodgy and rather incorrect and an incorrect way to scale journal properly. People have to understand that when they're using the stand stats within JoJo's, the, the stand stats don't actually refer to one's physical capabilities. It only really refers to the actual capabilities of the stand's ability and doesn't actively scale to their raw speed nor their raw physical strength. There are multiple examples to back this up throughout the years of JoJo content, and I will actually give some examples to prove my point as well. Take Rolling, Rolling Stones for the first example, a stand from the exact same part as GR and was actually revealed in like a flashback arc just after the main events of Part 5 happened. If you look at the stats Rolling Stones has, it is shown that it has basically the exact same destructive power ranking as Golden Experience Requiem, yet Rolling Stones is literally just a rock. And if someone is fated to die, it's when it's like comes into contact with it, they'll immediately die in painless death. Of course, such a thing can't have any physical ca capability to harm someone, since and it's just a hacks ability. It doesn't need any physical strength or physical growth to do so. This just is like a really good example on why stand sets don't scale to their physical strength. But rather their like abilities, uh, just overall. The, sev the second example I'll be bringing up is Dragon's Dream, a Part Six stand, which the majority of the stand stats are also ranked as none, with the exception of its staying stat. And even though it has comparable stats to Golden Experience Requiem, as the explanation it's given by Anasui and full Foo Fighters and so on, Dragon's Dream is more of a technique than anything else, and as the technique is, you know, explained to us, we're, we're revealed that it, the technique is a famous form of martial arts or whatever originating from China that suggests that one can just follow the paths of natural flows of energy. 
including things like wind or water. That's why the English translation for the name is considered wind and water. And as I said, the Dragon's Dream Den, uh, Dragon's Dream ability is more of a technique than anything and wouldn't actively scale to the stand's physical capabilities. The same applies to Golden Experience Requiem. My third example would be White Snake. Even though it has a D in its speed, White Snake was still able to speed blitz part six Jotaro so fast that White Snake actually got behind Jotaro and took Jotaro's memory disc before part six Jotaro could even summon Star Platinum to fence White Snake off. Which the speed ranking for White Snake wouldn't even make sense in the context of who he was up against in that specific scene. Jotaro and Star Platinum have been consistently stated throughout the series or at least the f- original universe, to be one of the fastest and one of the strongest characters and stands in the series. And considering how slow White Snake's non-disc-related abilities go, that being the white substance were shown covering Jolene and Jotaro, when, they, when Jotaro came to visit Jolene, it makes more sense that these stand stats were referring to the abilities' capabilities, as well as how fast it was going, or... In this case, how slow it was going. My fourth example would be Superfly, a part four stand. The only reason why I'm using a like the anime version of the stand stats is because the manga didn't really do the stand stats up until part five. Now, Superfly was given a speed ranking of E, but it wouldn't make sense for the E ranking to refer to its physical characteristics since it's literally a commission tower. It can't physically move about and it having an e ranking even though it e ranking usually means terrible it still suggests it just is capable of moving to some extent it would make more sense that it was referring to the abilities and its capability of going slow my fifth example would be another part six stand called kiss Kiss was given similar, if not the exact same, statistics as our boy Star Platinum and World. But the, that wouldn't make sense for the stats to be scaling to Kiss's physical capabilities, since that would mean Kiss would scale above the majority of other stands in the series. And because of that, if you do want to argue that, <laughs> it would present a lot of different scaling inconsistencies within the original universes of JoJo and its well, scaling. And the last and sixth example I'll bring up just to prove my point is the stand Sky High, another part six stand that Jolene Stone Free fended off. Sky High has the exact same speed statistic as GR being ranked as none, but if having a none stat would really give a stand's physical speed, say, inaccessible levels of speed, just for the sake of argument, then that would present a lot of different, like, scaling inconsistencies within the series, since Jolene Stone Free would scale off of Sky High's due to being able to keep up and react to Sky High. If these non-statistics for stand sets were to be scaled to the physical characteristics of the stands and their physical speed, then that would just, as I said, provide several inconsistencies in the actual scaling of the series. As I said, just for argument's sake, let's just say that it gives them inaccessible levels of speed, all right? And for an example (laughs) on why it would present a lot of different inconsistencies, this example would involve a time stop. The whole point of inaccessible levels of speed is is that the person can move around in zero time. But if time stops, meaning that time isn't flowing, that wouldn't matter since the person with that inaccessible level of speed just can move around with zero fucking restrictions from time and without the need of time flowing. So if these stands with these none statistics have inaccessible levels of speed just because they have none as their speed ranking, like Sky High, for example, that would mean, as I said, Jolene of Stone Free would scale off that level of speed, giving her inaccessible levels of speed. Then that would scale to Jotaro with Star Platinum, and that would then scale to other characters like Paul Doreff and Theo via scaling to Jotaro, who scales to Jolene. So if Paul Doreff, 
for some reason has inaccessible levels of speed now. That would mean the whole scene at the staircase when he confronted Dio alone at Dio's mansion wouldn't have happened as it did in canon, since he wouldn't be affected by time stop for the exact reason I just mentioned. Considering everything I just said, <laughs> there's also the fact that having a non-stand statistic doesn't necessarily mean the same as you think. It just means it's not relevant to the stand's abilities, or it can't really, or it's just difficult to quantify the stand's ability in the normal stand measuring rod. And if the if that stand statistic for some reason would scale to the stand's physical stats, then there would be no point in the stand description for Star Platinum to mention its physical strength. The only reason the stand set description mentioned Star Platinum's physical capabilities is because it's actually relevant to Star Platinum as a whole, and that the stand sets don't actually talk about your physical stats, it just talks about the abilities. The same apply would apply to GER. If Golden Experience Requiem was that overwhelmingly strong and overwhelmingly fast, then it would actually mention something about that in the stand set description. But if you actually look at the stand set description for Golden Experience Requiem, it mentions absolutely nothing about the physical capabilities of the stand. It just talks about return to zero. Another way I've seen people try to argue Journal of Golden Experience Requiem being higher than it actually does is via the infinite death loop. Now, this argument has been a while around for a couple of years at this point, and people try and argue that GER's infinite death loop ability creates an infinite amount of universes for the Avlo or whoever the poor person at the target is for this ability. But that's simply just not the case for the actual ability and how it works. At best, it puts the Avlo into a separate space time that repeats itself after every death. But in reality, the Avlo is still in the same universe as Jorno and Co. Mostly because Tresh, who was someone who was the only person that could actually sense the Avlo, could still sense the Avlo's presence after being after the Infinite Death Loop ability was triggered and was act actively trying to see where her father was. And deaths outright reference each other. An example would be the death the Avlo suffered at the morgue, which the nurse at the morgue actively referenced how he was stabbed in a stabbed to death in a river, referencing how in the previous death the Avlo was stabbed by a homeless guy under the bridge in a river. So no Golden Experience Requiem does not scale to Multiversal Plus via the infinite death loop. He just puts the, the Avlo into an infinite loop of death in the same universe. It's just an ability that doesn't scale anywhere. And from what I've seen relatively recently, people have been using the Avlo's time erasure ability to scale Golden Experience Requiem to 4D or bare minimum Universal Plus via Return to Zero operating on and overwhelming and just overriding the Avlo's time erasure ability. But I don't know how people make up those mental gymnastics to get GR that high. Well, yes. It is stated by guides and the stand descriptions of King Crimson that King Crimson is able to actively erase time, quote unquote. If we actually take a look at how Diablo's ability is shown to us in the series and how Araki decided to present it to us, then it's a whole different conversation. If we look at the examples of time erasure being used, we're shown characters like Bruno, who doesn't have any abilities regarding time, nor any time-based resistances just moving around and destroying pillars as if, you know, it's <laughs> as if time is flowing normally. The same goes with here when Diablo is shown splashing blood into Giorno's eyes during the final battle outside the Colosseum in Italy, since that's where part five is set, if you don't know. There's also the fact that the statement that statements can be contradicted by physical feats within the series. So the Avlo is just erasing people's memories of time and not physically erasing time itself. There's also the fact that time-based abilities don't necessarily scale anywhere unless you can actively prove otherwise or actively prove why a specific character with this time erasure ability or just time ability as a whole can 
scale to that that ability and can scale to 4D or bare minimum uni plus just because return to zero can affect time of based abilities or at least abilities that erase memories of time it doesn't necessarily scale gr to 4D sorry to tell you that everyone and another way to scale golden experience requiem is via D4C or dirty deeds done dirt cheap I've seen people like a while ago try and argue and scale Golden Experience Requiem to D4C because some guidebook statements like the Jojo Veller that do go over part 7 and every other previous part uh, refer to GR as the ultimate stand or something similar. And then they scale D4C to 5D because the same guidebook, that being the Jojo Veller guidebook, has a statement saying that D4C transcends dimensions even mathematically but that's simply just not the case firstly when you look at the d4c's page and that statement then translate it to english it does not mention dimensions in the sense of, of the mathematical dimensions the translation saying that the ability to transcend dimensions shatters president valentine's ability to travel through parallel universes further of a debunk more, it's more likely referring to Tusk Act 4 abilities and not D4C, as that ability shatters D4C's ability. Secondly, like even if you want to say that the transcending dimensions refers to D4C, <laughs> D4C like, is referred to transcending dimensions, and it's referred to D4C's ability to hop between dimensions, as in universes, not physically transcending the three spatial dimensions and one temporal dimension that makes up space-time, for example, which is narratively supported, and even then, Golden Experience regularly and being referred to the, like, referred to as an ultimate stand doesn't necessarily scale to the other stands in the Steel Ball Run universe, <laughs> and that was, like, one of the only stands outside of Star Platinum that was referred to as the ultimate stand since the ultimate stand from part 4 onwards was a rather experimental phrase on Araki's part, and doesn't necessarily mean much since Star Platinum, a dex part, as well as multiple times in previous parts, has the same statement. So it's like, do you take one statement from a guidebook or multiple statements from the manga? You know what I mean? So, at the end of it all, that's the majority of the misconceptions of Golden Experience Requiem pretty much debunked. Now, there is the Jojo Gogo uh, guidebook saying that, you know, D4, uh, Golden Experience Requiem is the, you know, ultimate stand and so on and so forth. But to be completely honest, I would be repeating myself for the most part. But... If anyone wants to bring that up, I will briefly go over it now. When it says, when Jojo Gogo says that Golden Experience Requiem is the ultimate stand and states that the stand is surpasses any other stand in terms of like power or whatever, it is actively referring to power as in. Golden Experience Requiem's Return to Zero. That's why it specifically shows Return to Zero being used against Diavolo and not the Beatdown or Muda Muda Rush. If it did refer to the physical aspect of the of Golden Experience Requiem, it would have shown the Muda Muda Rush Golden Experience Requiem just performed onto Diavolo, but it didn't. And it's very inconsistent considering everything else I presented in this video with Star Platinum having the same, if not more, statements referring to that stand as the ultimate stand in comparison to Journo's Golden Experience Requiem. Golden Experience Requiem arguably does not make it in, like, in the top five in terms of physical power. It's arguably weaker in comparison to stands such as Polnareff's Silver Chariot. And that's because Silver Chariot like performed better even though 
Polderef was in a weakened, crippled state with Silver Chariot's armor on in one slash, severely wounding Diablo in comparison to Golden Experience Requiem needing multiple uh, Muda Muda rushes in comparison to just hurt Diablo and do similar amounts of damage to and to activate the infinite death loop. Some people might uh, bring up the counter argument of Polnareff losing to Diavolo in their first encounter, but that could just sim be simply argued that Polnareff didn't know Diavolo's ability at the time. Plus, if you actually look at what was shown of the fight, Polnareff, like the only reason why Polnareff lost was, was because he was caught off guard several times due to Diavolo's time erasure, quote unquote, ability, and not because of anything else. The only real advantage Diavolo had had against Polderef was arguably speed, but that's partially because of Time Erasure helping Diavolo, not because of some sort of like speed blitzing godly speed on Diavolo's part. And like JoJo fans believe Return to Zero is this ultimate ability that is this omniscient, unstoppable thing that no one can counter. But the thing is, with that ability, it, it's, o it's only like low-end causality manipulation. It's not that special. Like, it can simply be overwhelmed by higher-end levels of causality manipulation, things like power nullification and or something similar. There's also the fact that it can just not work on higher dimensional beings or characters with higher dimensional scaling. For the fact that a third dimensional being with third dimensional hacks can't affect someone who has sixth dimensional AP scaling or is like 125 dimensional in terms of its overall existence. And like things like power nullification, being able to counter Return to Zero as well as Gold Experience Requiem is pretty, like, pretty fucking self-explanatory. It's power nullification. Its whole job is to cancel out abilities, such as a low-tier version of causality manipulation. But if anyone has a disagree with, like, a, a disagreement with me or, like, wants to debate then yeah, I'll fucking I'll fucking link my fucking Discord like username as well as the number down below in my Discord if you want, like down below in the description if you want. And you guys can also join my server if you want. I will send you the invite via Discord DM since you know YouTube's weird when it comes to links. For me anyway. Um yeah. By the way, like on a on a closing note, Ostolfo from Fate absolutely fucking obliterates journal and i can make an entire video on that subject and if anyone wants to know why you can either ask for the video or just fucking like dm me on discord i will gladly like explain why my glorious king of stuff who beats the fucking bricks at a at a requiem